Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudey. I'm a consultant at Fertility Plus and at the Homerton Fertility Center. So today I'm going to talk to you about follicle size, its link to maturity and to blastocyst euploidy. And this is a paper which was published in Human Reproduction in 2020. And what we are trying to see is, is there an association between follicle size and oocyte quality? And also, is there an association between follicle size and the ability to reach a blastocyst stage and whether you can predict euploid status. So what do we know? We know that generally the dominant follicle is likely to contain an egg, but we are unaware of whether ovarian stimulation, the oocyte quality would be of best quality. Now studies vary and studies vary with studies showing that oocytes from larger follicles may have more mature oocytes and have more fertilized oocytes while oocytes from large follicles are suboptimal with medium sized follicles sometimes yielding better oocytes. So the purpose of this study was to examine follicle size and oocytes from follicles and see whether there is an association between follicle size and quality of oocytes. So it's a, it's a very small study and they had 22 oocyte donors, young, between, and most of them were on the GNRH antagonist protocol. HCG or GNRH analog trigger or a dual trigger was given. ICSI was done. Embryos were biopsied on day five and day six, and that is again a blastocyst stage. And follicle diameter was expressed in two ways, one as in follicular millimeter size, and again, a second one as a Z values by taking follicle diameter in, in millimeter and a mean diameter and taking the standard deviation. And this was then plotted on an ROC curve and the area under the curve using follicle, follicle larger than criteria value. So that is on the statistical side. So the criterion diameter varied from 24 millimeter to 12 millimeter. And what did this in general told us is that there was a very good predictor value between follicle size and metaphase two or oocyte maturity. Now, what did the study tell us? The study told us that follicle size did not have much relationship in predicting fertilization. Also, it's a poor predictor of 2 p.m. oocytes, which become blastocyst. And it's almost again a poor predictor of being able to predict euploidy of the embryo based on follicle size. So follicle size in general has its limitations in terms of being able to tell you how, what, what you can predict to a large extent. But what is the importance of follicular size? It seems to be a better predictor of maturity. Also, oocytes that are obtained from follicles less than 12 millimeter are more likely to be GV oocytes. And oocytes obtained from follicles more than 17 millimeter were more likely to be 2PN oocytes. And there seems to be an overlap in study between follicle sizes for GV and M1 and between M1, metaphase 1 and metaphase 2 oocytes, indicating that follicular size is not an absolute predictor of oocyte maturity. So when you look at this study, what we can say is that your smaller follicles are more likely to produce GV and that correlation or is excellent. The ability of larger follicles to predict metaphase 2 sites is pretty good. And though, let's be clear that you can only fertilize through exceed, you know, 
mature oocyte, so there should be a link to a blastocyst conversion. And though the blastocyst formation is linked to metaphase 2 oocytes, which is also linked to size of the follicles, there should be a link, but this direct link was not found. So this small study tells us that, well, follicle size may not predict the quality of oocytes. It also suggests that the middle range follicles may produce mature oocytes. So if you look at the entire concept of follicle dominance, and this is quite old, but you know, is um, still relevant in the present time. And what it tells us is that the dominant follicle is believed to be the most, is the most developed follicles with the maximum number of SH, FSH receptors. The follicle with most FSH receptors is that follicle which will continue to grow. And during ovarian stimulation, Again, follicular hierarchy, which means the leading follicle, remains unchanged with the leading follicle tends to be the largest growing follicle, but also the smaller follicles will grow. Now, the larger follicles that may not yield oocytes, leading to more euploid blastocysts, suggest that the follicular dominance is unrelated to ploidy of the embryos. Now, this is, a, this is a very big question, which I don't think we have answered yet. And I think, see, in nature, what tends to happen is a follicle is chosen and that becomes the dominant follicle. And then and nature chooses it. In ovarian stimulation, again, you are recruiting follicles that in nature will be atretic, which will die. And the uniqueness of IVF is that many of these follicles which are, are recruited and which whose destiny is to die will grow. Now, which of these will be euploid? So is the dominant follicle euploid and the others more likely to be aneuploid? And we don't know that. We just don't know that at present. And what is surprising is that as age advances, aneuploid rate increases. But in younger women, we see that genetically normal oocytes are also being lost. So the question is, what is that that stimulates the growth of a dominant follicle or other euploid follicles? And I don't think we have the answer at present. So if you look at this study is, again, there are limitations because it's a small study. And in fact, we think that any follicle is capable of yielding euploid oocytes. It's unclear if pushing follicles to grow is very helpful. And follicle sizes taken on the day of oocyte ret retrieval may not be similar as a day of trigger. And if smaller oocytes give metaphase 2, they have a good chance of being fertilized and obtaining euploid blastocysts. And this throws light to a certain extent is, and as I've always said, as much as the size of follicles, the length of duration is important. And if you're going to go with a shorter length of duration of eight days or seven days, in spite of follicular size, you do not, even though you may get nuclear maturity, the chances of having a successful blastocyst conversion may be lower. Also, in the same way, if you're going to stimulate poor responders with very high doses, what are you going to do? You're going to push smaller follicles, you know, you know, uh, follicles rather, not even smaller, I'll say, follicles which are closer to that brim of the triangle, of closer to 10 millimeter to grow faster. So you see the growth of follicles with less resistance go faster. And the growth of follicles with a smaller resistance or, or a great more resistance hang on. And that's something which you have to, we have to understand. And maybe that, again, brings to the idea of between mild and maximum stimulation, but that's what we'll take at a later date. So again, if you do like this talk, do like the page and share it. And again, if you want to join us for the online meet, please join us. It's in three weeks' time. Thank you.